So when it comes to places of worship, I'm already not a big fan of going anywhere near them since I'm openly queer and not a big fan of organized religion. I also, I did my time there when I was younger, trust me. But I got a question for you. How do you feel about them? Let me know in the comments and stay tuned until the end of today for another edition of Comment Section Shoutouts. How about we kick things off with a fabulous story about witchcraft and the flower woman over at St. Mary's Church in Botsford. The Witches of Belvoir is one of the most famous tales of English witchcraft. And if you don't know it, don't worry, that's what I'm here for. Welcome to my new favorite thing. Let's picture things together, folks. There's this old Gothic church with a towering spire surrounded by gravestones and it's called St. Mary's Church. Sounds like the perfect setting for a horror movie, right? So back in the early 1600s, there was this woman named Joan Flower who lived there with her daughters, Philippa and Margaret. They were basically outcasts in their community and they worked as servants for the Earl of Rutland at Belvoir Castle. But here's the thing, they got fired for stealing and that's when things took a turn for the worse. Legend has it that the Flower Woman were so ticked off about getting canned that they decided to get revenge on the Earl. And how did they do it? Well, let's see, let's look at the times. Witchcraft, of course. Yeah, apparently they put a curse on the Earl's two sons, which were the heirs to his earldom, and well, let's just say it didn't end well for the boys. Fast forward to today, and the story is still giving people the eebie-jeebies. This church is like ground zero for creepy tales. Inside the church, there's this tomb that commemorates the deaths of the two boys, and it says that they were, well, killed by wicked practices and sorcery. Fun little additional fact for y'all, St. Mary's Church is the only place in England where you can find a tomb that officially pins witchcraft as the cause of death. Which, that's a little chilling. No wonder the Pope wants to steer clear of this place. Who wants to mess with that kind of dark energy? So, next time you're in the area, maybe think twice before wandering into this church. Unless, you know, you're into that whole haunted cursed tomb vibe. Which, I am. I don't look like it today, but I promise. Normally my cup of tea. Alright, so we're going to stay in England for this next entry and move over to St. Mary the Virgin in Clophill. Clophill? Clophill? I looked up five different pronunciations and they told me five different things, so you tell me which one's right, folks. Originally built facing the west sometime around the year 1350, it's believed to have been erected on top of a leper hospital run by monks. I'd like to take a moment to note that it was built in the wrong direction, with churches traditionally facing east, the direction from which the sun rises, which is associated with the location of heaven and the return of the Messiah in Christian religion. Altars inside of these holy buildings would face in the eastbound direction for prayers. Some have claimed that because St. Mary the Virgin faced is away from God, it thus opens the doors to hell, and ergo responsible for the tale I'm about to tell. Oh, that was a good rhyme. The building was abandoned in 1848 when the rector at the time made the decision to have a new church built, instead of expanding the previous one, which was much needed due to the rapidly growing congregation. Old St. Mary's, as was dubbed by the locals, was then primarily used as a mortuary chapel, holding bodies before they were buried in the adjacent cemetery. By the 1950s, St. Mary's had become so run down that it could no longer fulfill that use, with just the outdoor walls and tower remaining. In March of 1963, the tomb of an 18th century apothecary's wife was broken into and the bones were arranged ritualistically in the middle of the church. And once again, on Midsummer's Eve of 1969, multiple women's graves were broken into, with bones being removed and rearranged once more. While the specific individuals involved in these acts were never identified, the arrangements found resembled those used in black mass rituals performed by satanic groups at the time. After the first incident in 1963, a rare decision was made to rehallow, or in more simple terms, re-bless the altar which was left in the building in a failed attempt to protect the building from evil. Later that year, Reverend Harold Colthurst reported stumbling upon a group of men in the building that were in the midst of a mysterious ritual, being quoted as saying that the men were trying to communicate with evil spirits, chanting some sort of mumbo jumbo. They were definitely in league with the devil. Modern day visitors to the now landmark have reported seeing a plethora of ghostly figures during daytime, nighttime, faint lights moving about before vanishing mysteriously, along with reports of a chilly and oppressive atmosphere even during warm days. Yeah, I can see why some religious folks might not want to go there. How about we talk about a church that might not be haunted but still has some awfulness? Built in the late 8th century under the regime of the Sailendra dynasty, Borobudur Temple took an army of workers and 60,000 cubic meters of lava rock to construct. Yet, despite its massive size and elaborate rows of Buddha statues, it was mysteriously abandoned during the 14th century and sat in the jungle, undiscovered, until 1814. It was finally restored with the helping hand of UNESCO in the 1970s, and its walls have some weird carvings, depicting the tormenting of humans, beheadings, and much more gruesome visuals that throw some light on the violent, buried past of the site. I can't go into detail, sadly. 
Despite efforts to protect the temple, a few stupas were nearly destroyed during an attack in 1985. As the site is quite near to a few active volcanoes, the temple has also received its share of volcanic dust and earthquake events. The efforts for conservation have always been made after similar events have happened though, so they're trying to keep it. In the style of a step pyramid, the temple has six square bases, topped with three circular layers and a large main stupa. Pilgrims and visitors alike follow a guided path to the top of the complex, which leads them around the monument a number of times before reaching the peak. And along the way, the path is marked by 500 Buddha statues and thousands of reliefs that depict daily life in Buddha's Java. It's not spooky, but you still don't want to go there. So check out this next place isn't a church, but it's a religious building, and that counts in my book. Time to check out the old Ursuline Convent in New Orleans. Ah, which is a classic place for all things weird and ooky spooky. The Ursulines have been in Louisiana since the early 1700s and have inhabited a series of buildings up to the present day while working with schools, charities, and orphanages. Apparently back in the 1720s, the French government sent young ladies to their settlements in America as prospective wives for the settlers there. It makes sense. The mademoiselles arrived with their belongings in chests or casquettes and took up residence with the nuns until they could find husbands. According to legend though, they weren't carrying the usual possessions one would find in the luggage of a group of girls at the time. No dresses, books, shoes, money, iPods, ha ha ha, no hair ribbons, no brushes. No, these young ladies were carrying vampires. Yeah, vampires in their luggage. Good thing this was in the 1700s because there's no way the TSA would let vampires get through security anymore. They're so strict about what you can bring on planes these days. No liquids in containers greater than three ounces, no sharp objects, no aerosol cans, and no undead monsters. Ugh. And here I was hoping to bring a vampire back when I go to the States in a couple of months. Anyways, the legend suggests that the girls were permanently locked in the third floor attic of the old convent with their unusual carry-ons. And to this day, the superstitious locals believe that the vampires sneak out of the convent to feed at night. Although how they sneak out of a building they were locked in is beyond me. Hey look, since the young women were trapped in the convent along with the monsters, I hope that the vampires were at least gentlemen enough to romance the young ladies with sparkly romps through the forest while calling them spider monkeys, or at the very least, the women are keeping them away from the vervain. And if you got either of those references, or both of them, I love you. Alrighty everybody, we're going to end today with a personal favorite, the Abbey of the Black Hag. Locally known as St. Catherine's Abbey, or simply as Old Abbey, it's located roughly two miles east of the village of Shanna Golden, in the townland of Old Abbey. Eh, can you guess where it got its name? One of the earliest recorded nunneries in Ireland, with its first official record being around 1298, this place was built on land donated by John Fitzthomas, and has the typical layout for abbeys of its time, with the dining hall, cells, isolated meditation areas, and other rooms still able to be identified amongst the ruins today. During the 15th century, there was a major battle for supremacy in the area between the Earl Fitzgerald and the prestigious Butler family, of which the Earldom of Ormond belonged. It got to such an extent that the local bishop was known to pray for peace between the families at masses. During one of the nightly attacks, Earl Fitzgerald attempted to get his wife to safety, but as he was pulling her onto his horse, an arrow pierced her thigh, shattering the bone and spraying red bodily fluids. As he rode on, the Countess appeared to have succumbed to her injury, leading the Earl to seek sanctuary at St. Catherine's. The heartbroken man was certain his wife had passed, so he swiftly buried her beneath the altar and continued elsewhere to find safety. As the night went on, the nuns and residents began to hear hair-raising screams, and made the decision to rebury the Countess in the hopes of bringing her peace. When they dug up the body, they discovered her fingers were broken, her nails had been torn off, the poor woman had been buried alive, with a very slow and tumultuous end of her life. To this day, it is believed the Countess has been unable to find peace and continues to scream in anguish, waiting for her husband to save her from a fate truly worse than death. Moving slightly ahead in time, we come to the Black Nun herself, described as one in the order that wasn't content with being humble, helping others over herself, and the servitude to God, she instead craved power. The hag had her own cell, where she worshipped Satan and performed black magic, becoming a slave to the occult. Now, This was the highest form of blasphemy in the church, and the other nuns in the order fled the abbey, while the hag remained in her now house of darkness. I like ye. To complete her rituals, the black nun would venture into the local community and perform depraved lewd acts and offer sacrifices, with the bones of young community members later discovered on the grounds. Now fast forward to modern times, where visitors have reported seeing the dark shadowy figure of a nun wandering, the feeling of being constantly watched and a disembodied hand reaching towards them. There has been flashlights that can't function in her cell, modern batteries drain too quickly to have any sort of rational explanation, just all over weird. And that brings me to the end of my list, which means it's time for comment section shoutouts. From the top 5 scary ghost sightings that will make you a believer, user mking846 said that they've seen too many things to be a skeptic. You and me both, buddy. 
Annalise Bloom, 6765, also said they're a believer. They've had weird and paranormal, demonic things happen to them years ago. Yeah, no, I trust me, I get it. And finally, Willie Gutierrez, 2337, mentioned that they stay on the Queen Mary every year while working a reggae fast right across the street from it. And it's normal to see ladies walking towards you from afar and just disappear. They got used to it. Well, damn, I guess I need to book a trip. Alrighty, folks, that's been it for me today. I've been Alexa, your resident ookie spooky girly. And if you enjoyed my ramblings today, could you help us out by giving this video a like, subscribing if you aren't already, hit the bell for more church chatter from us here at Top 5 Scary Videos, and I'll see y'all next time, you lovely spooky people.